পাঁচটি জসিমুদ্দিন সোহেল আপনি স্টার্ট করতে পারেন Thank you. Thank you everyone for um, participating. Um, also, uh, your, um, pre uh, your presence means a lot, actually. So uh, thanks for this opportunity. I'm going to share the screen now. And for today's journal club, I have selected a review article on hybrid nanomaterials for cancer immunotherapy. So uh, basically in our research internship, we are mainly focusing on biotech projects. Um, uh, so uh, as my working area is nanomaterials, uh, I kind of guessed that um, if an original, uh, if I present an origin journal, then it would then like <clears throat> everyone will not have a proper uh, idea about nanomaterials and its application. So that's why I have selected this review journal. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. So the uh, topic for today's uh, journal club is hybrid nanomaterials for cancer immunotherapy. Um, so actually nano immunotherapy has been, it has been recognized as a highly promising strategy for cancer treatment. Uh, now, it actually combines nanotechnology and immunotherapy uh, to combat against tumor. Like of, of late, we have seen that so many cases with tumors and like tumors that lead to cancer and all those things. And uh, it's kind of incurable. Like even with chemotherapy, uh, there have been so many evidences that people, uh, their, uh, people's survival rate is uh, very low. That's why uh, scientists, especially in nanomaterial fields, they have uh, came up with this uh, type of uh, alternative solution that we may apply in some cases. And today I'll be presenting on this uh, topic. So hybrid nanomaterials, it consists of at least two constituents, uh, constituents with distinct compositions and properties, usually organic and inorganic. Now, organic is uh, actually man-made. We uh, obviously know as uh, most of us are from, most, uh, most of the participants are from biotech uh, fields. So organic and inorganic, and it have been engineered with integrated functions and enormous potential in boosting cancer immunotherapy. Now, uh, this review, it will provide a summary of hybrid nanomaterials that reports for cancer immunotherapy including nanoscale metal organic frameworks, metal phenolic networks, mesophorous organosilicon nanoparticles, uh, metallofullerene nanomaterials, polymer lipid, and biomacromolecule-based hybrid nanomaterials. The combination of immunotherapy with chemotherapy, uh, as, as I was talking before, the uh, combination of immunotherapy and chemotherapy uh, also chemodynamic therapy, radiotherapy, radiodynamic therapy, photothermal therapy, photodynamic ther therapy, like uh, for different, different cases and different, different patients, different uh, of these methods uh, may work. So uh, our uh, review goal is to find out which one works best for which type of patients. So uh, for introduction, uh, cancer, it is characterized by uncontrolled growth and expansion of abnormal cells is the main leading cause of death, death worldwide with uh, more or less 19.3 million new cancer cases and almost, almost 10 million cancer deaths occurred worldwide in 2020. That's huge, right? So uh, whereas surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy uh, are still the frontline approaches for cancer treatment. There are numerous cases in which these treatments caused severe adverse effect. Obviously, with chemotherapy, we have seen that uh, so many people loses their uh, hair. This is the first uh, occurrence. Secondly, uh, there's been serious uh, consequences with the eyesight and like uh, even skin uh, problems, skin-related problems. And also there are, uh, with radiotherapy also, there are so many problems with their uh, lungs and proper physiotherapic movements. So in this context, uh, cancer immunotherapy has emerged as a highly promising strategy for the treatment of certain types of cancers, particularly for eradicating metastatic tumors, which is based on the stimulation or recovery of innate and adaptive 
adaptive immunity to recognize and eliminate tumor cells. Since cancer immunotherapy utilizes body's immune system to combat against tumors, its potential adverse effects, although still cannot be completely avoided, are dramatically reduced. Because uh, obviously, like it adapts with the immunity of body. That's why, like, maybe uh, we are assuming that maybe all these adverse effects with the other types of treatment like chemotherapy, phototherapy, all these type of treatments may be dramatically reduced. So nanomaterials in combination with immunotherapies have offered a unique solution to address the aforementioned, aforementioned challenge. Thanks to the great efforts devoted in recent years, nanomaterials have shown remarkable promise in promoting cancer immunotherapy in a range of areas such as cancer vaccine, immunological checkpoint inhibitors, molecular adjuvants, and modulation of tumor microenvironments, TME leading to significantly improved therapeutic efficiency as well as biosafety. Uh, organic nanomaterials such as polymers and lipids are the most classic family of biomaterials applied in drug delivery owing to their excellent biodegradability and biocompatibility. To date, the majority of US Food and Drug Administration, US FDA approved nanoformulations are based on organic nanomaterials. This reality uh, catalyzed the research enthusiasm in exploring novel organic nanomaterials such as protein and nucleic acid-based nanomaterials that emerged recently and have achieved encouraging preclinic and clinic outcomes in cancer immunotherapy. Hello, Joshimuddin Sorry, maybe net problem. Joshimuddin Sorry, Joshimuddin Sorry, Okay, I'm sharing again. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so far, um, where did you guys see uh, from inorganic nanomaterials, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So here, uh, I want to um, talk about some terms that we will be using. Um, the first one is going to be in MOF. So we will be using uh, inorganic nanomaterials and hybrid nanomaterials. So in inorganic nanomaterials such as ceramics, metal-based materials, carbon-based materials, and clay materials, they are also highly appealing materials due to primarily to their mechanical, thermal, catalytic, optical, and magnetic properties, tunable porous structure, and consequently diverse functionalities. So uh, they have laid the foundation for researchers to explore innovative nanotherapeutic system for immunomodulation and immunotherapy against cancer. Now, uh, whereas hybrid materials, they are defined as the composites consisting of at least two constituents, usually organic and inorganic. So here we are actually combining uh, an organic material and an inorganic material at the nanometer or molecular level, which has had a surprisingly long history since the emergence of paints made from inorganic and organic components that were used thousands of years ago. Now, we are actually using all those materials to promote nanomaterials and use it to improve the immuno, uh, immunological system of a human. Okay, so that uh, our body can actually fight against cancer. 
Now for cancer immunotherapy, cancer immunotherapy is considered as one of the most promising treatment modalities owing to its greatly reduced adverse effects compared to current first line treatments in including chemotherapy and RT. So here RT is reverse transcription like RT-PCR type of thing, this thing. So as well as excellent uh, therapeutic efficiency, cancer immunotherapy relies on the activation of the immune system to target and eradicate cancer cells, which may result in durable anti-tumor response and prevent metastasis and recurrence. So we obviously know metastasis is actually uh, combining the cells and producing new cells. So when the cancer, uh, uh, when the tumor, uh, when there is cancer, uh, tumor leading to cancer, uh, it actually generates more cell, leading to more tumor and, and leading to more cancer-related uh, uh, cells. Now, uh, when it is durable and, and the anti-tumor response in, is actually durable, it prevents that metastasis of those cells and recurrence. So in particular, immune checkpoint block, blockade, uh, chimeric antigen receptor, T-cell, and vaccines have achieved remarkable achievements in nanoparticles. So um, I will uh, skip some technical things um, uh, as we are reviewing this journal. Uh, now, hybrid nanomaterials, we will be talking about those. Uh, first, the preparation and surface modification. Uh, a wide range of synthetic approaches have been developed to prepare organic, inorganic hybrid nanomaterials. Um, So uh, surface modifications are performed to obtain the desired uh, physical chemical properties for biomedical applications. And NMOF, NMOF is uh, hybrid materials for metal organic frameworks. So these nanoparticles are primarily synthesized by methods including nano precipitation, uh, silvothermal, reverse micro emulsion, and surfactant templated solvothermal reactions. However, many of the NMOFs, many of the metal organic uh, frameworks, they tend to aggregate in aqueous media. Uh, that means like in uh, any form of liquid media. So their colloidal stability could be improved by the surface modifications. Um, that is silica biocompatible polymers to increase their performance in biological applications. So these metal organic frameworks, they are composed of phenolic ligands, which uh, with metal ions also fall into the class of MPNs. So uh, MPNs is metal phenolic network coated nanoparticles. So here we actually uh, combine metal and phenol and, and coat them together in order to prepare a nanoparticle. So the fabrication of MPNs is really more simple, rapid and environment friendly. So over N, N, NMOFs, uh, uh, MPNs are actually more um, efficiently used by the scientists over MOFs. So MPNs can be assembled in one step owing to the abundant phenolic groups in uh, polyphenols that can easily coordinate with metal ions. So they actually easily coordinate with metal ions. Their functionalities, the unique structure of organic inorganic hybrid nanomaterials endow them with diverse properties and functions. First, multiple biofunctions can be incorporated into NMOFs and NPNs owing to the intrinsic biological activities of metal ions and organic lingers. So metal ions and organic linkers, uh, in, in this case, for metal ions and organic linkers, we actually try and combine one metal ion and uh, one organic linker like um, ferrous and phenol, okay, or um, oxygen and phenol, kind of like this. For example, some metal ions or organic ligands in MMOFs and MPNs can enhance the generic generation of reactive oxygen species by PDT, RT, RDT, and CDT. So here PDT is photodynamic therapy. RT is reverse transcription like RT-PCR. RDT is rapid diagnostic tests and CDT is chemo uh, dynamic therapy. So uh, their biodegradability and biocompatibility is in simple, we can say that their biodegradability and biocompatibility is 
up to the mark because like they can survive in aqueous media and they can also combine uh, in organic groups and in inorganic groups, groups they combine together and they can actually try and activate the immuno uh, response system, anti-tumor response system. So their biodegradability and biocompatibility is up to the mark. So which is expected to further benefit their cl clinical use. Then in most for cancer immunotherapy, the integration of nanotechnology with cancer immunotherapy is a promising development direction. Uh, nanoparticles such as liposomes, metal nanoparticles, polymers, mesophorous silica, carbon nanotubes, calcium phosphates, and NMOFs have been used to construct nanocarriers. Um, owing to the large surface areas, highly ordered porosity, and well defined structures, NMOFs will have promising ability of loading and releasing for therapeutic agents. So they actually carry, they construct nanocarriers, they carry and load and release uh, these uh, well-defined structure for therapeutic agents. So in consideration of biocompatibility, compatibility, the most often study, studied NMOFs are materials of the Institute Lavoisier, zeolitic imidazolat frameworks, uh, porous coordination networks, and University of Oslo nanoparticles. So these are the universities that actually studies NMOFs. Uh, and among many nanoformulations, NMOFs have emerged as a unique class of inorganic organic hybrid nanomaterials with several favorable attributes for biological applications, went to excellent biocompatibility, biodegradability, biodegradability uh, suitable size, ease of modification, and functionalization. So uh, NMOFs as nanocarrier uh, for vaccines, adjunct, and drugs, uh, we will actually see this uh, picture for uh, NMOFs uh, activity, okay? So here uh, we can see that the mechanism of ACT cell here, uh, this uh, incomplete coating, this coating actually serves for NMOFs mineralization, living uh, mammali uh, mammalian cell. So in living mammalian cell, and, and moths are um, used and for and, and these precursor functionalized apartment binding, they bind it and make it a normal cell. So uh, these NMOFs, we can see that two, there is two molecule of uh, carboxylic acid with phenol attached to it with um, um, H2 and uh, two carbo one carboxylic acid is attached to another phenol. And then NMOF NPCs growth and uh, humans normal cells is gradually transversing into an anti-receptor tumor cell, cancer tumor cell. So this cancer cell, it, it is being, being anti-receptor to this cancer cell, okay? So again, if we go to NMOF's combination immunotherapy with chemotherapy, Sometimes with chemotherapy, NMOFs are actually combined, benefiting from the simplicity and diversity of NMOF synthesis. Protein encapsulation and absorption can be achieved conveniently, and drug molecules can also be linked to organic ligands and through hydrophobic interactions. So they interact uh, with chemotherapy and uh, also used during chemotherapic treatments. So NMOFs for com uh, combination immunotherapy with PDT PDT is photodynamic therapy. So PDP actually uses photosynthesizers, oxygen and light to destroy tumors through direct cell kill, microvascular disruption and inflammation. So when PDT, photodynamic um, therapy, it uses to directly destroy tumors through direct cell kill, it has this ab absurd adverse type of effect on the human. Okay, so NMOFs are combined with PDT and then therefore it is used. Therefore it is important to design suitable and hydrophilic nano platforms for, for the delivery of PSS. Okay, so uh, it is designed for suitable and hydrophilic nano platforms. Uh, here we can see how it is used. Uh, for, firstly, a very simple dose was used in uh, on rats tumor, very low dose of soft X-ray. And this tumor cell has these adverse effect. 
but with the combination of PDT here in this cycle, it is explained with the combination of PDT, uh, with the combination of NMOX with PDT, this tumor cell can actually have uh, secrete and release dams and immature masturization, mature of disease. So it becomes a normal cell. And also NMOS for combination immunotherapy with PDT and chemotherapy. Sometimes it also is combined with PDTs and chemo photodynamic therapy and also is with chemotherapy. Sometimes NMOS are also combined with CDT, that is chemodynamic therapy. Uh, and its effect we can see from here, normal CDT therapy. Um, we can see that here, the cells, there are some cells which uh, actually produces redox homostasis. Uh, it is the growth of, uh, growth of cancer cells. But here, with the combination therapy, we get an activated T cell, which actually uh, uh, promotes cell death of the cancer cells. Uh, it attacks and promotes the cell death of the cancer cells. Uh, MPNs for cancer immunotherapy. Uh, so MPNs are metal phenolic network coated nanoparticles. Um, Metal uh, phenolic network coated nanoparticles. Uh, please, uh, are you guys hearing me? Can you guys hear me properly? Yes. Okay, thank you. So MPNs for cancer immunotherapy, MPNs are metal phenolic network coated nanoparticles. So they are super molecular network structures established by the coordination interaction between metal ions. Metal ions may be uh, ferros, ferric ions, uh, manganese ions, uh, gallium ions, uh, polyphenols, natural polyphenols, and synthetic polyphenols, which combine specific functions of metal ions with the high affinity of phenolic to a wide range of surfaces. So polyphenols existing widely in natural plants have been demonstrated to have the effect of anti-tumor, antioxidages. Uh, so here, uh, this point should be noted. Polyphenols existing widely in natural plants, natural plants have been demonstrated to have the effect of anti-tumor, antioxidation, anti-radiation, and anti-thrombosis, and most of which have been FDA approved for food preparation on human health. So most importantly, polyphenols remain abundant in phenolic, um, phenolic moieties that can chelate metal ions, which metal ions play a vital role in biomedicine and chemical catalysis. So the plentiful types of metal ions and polyphenol endo MPNs with diverse properties and functions. Additionally, the pH responsive character of MPNs allows for disassembly kinetics to facilitate the release of metals and polyphenols. Therefore, as an emerging new class of coordination materials, MPNs have been explored as multifunctional nano platforms for various biomedical applications due to specific function moieties, redox responsive behavior, simple synthesis, and benign affinity with body tissue. In this section, uh, we will actually uh, focus on the important role of MPNs in cancer immunotherapy, including vaccine delivery and MPN mediated RT, RDT, PD. PT, PTT and SDT. Here, PTT is photothermal therapy, and um, and RDT, um, R RT is reverse transcription, RT PCR, and RDT is rapid diagnostic tests. So here, if we uh, look at this picture, we will see this amazing picture of tumor hypoxia, the this tumor growth and hypoxia-assisted cancer treatment, when we are applying these MPNs, uh, we are applying metal phenolic network coated nanoparticles, um, nanoparticles, we will see that DNA, this damage RT, oxygen generation RDT, OH production, CBT, and immune activation, CBI. So all these are immunosuppressed uh, and generation of peroxide, oxygen insufficiency and RT resistance. This uh, gets generated inside the tumor hypoxia. So when the generation of 
uh, peroxide is generated, this tumor hypoxia, it doesn't get effective um, uh, promotion from other uh, chemicals so that it can grow. So it, it cannot grow actually. So here at first uh, in blood vessel, we can see that this um, uh, control blood, it is, in, uh, it is um, not in controlled. It's, it's controlled is uh, kind of uh, not specific. And here it is distant, more distant, more distant, and more distant. So here uh, it has gone to the primary level of blood vessel, okay? So, um, and, and even in this graph, day post tumor inoculation and day post uh, tumor inoculation. So tumor volume, it is huge here, primary. And here we can see that there is a large distance between the tumor volume uh, from the before the start, after after the start of using of impians. So uh, sometimes we also use MONs, that is magnesium fluoride over gold nanoparticles. Uh, they have been identified as promising anti-tumor immunoadjuvant as classic type of delivery platform, which have attracted features including large specific surface area, adjustable particle size, easy surface functionalization tunable pore size and inherent biocompatibility. So MONs are actually inorganic and organic hybrid nanomaterial, mostly use magnesium fluorine over gold nanoparticles. So nanomaterials with controllable degradation, high tumor accumulation and high biocompatibility. Moreover, the hybridization of diverse organic groups will endow MONs with variety of functionalities. So MONs can be used as vaccine, vaccine delivery platform to provide tumor antigens directly or as a vaccine adjuvant. They can also synergize with other combinational um, immunotherapies such as PDT, PTT, and SDT. So we can also combine these to kill cancer cells immunologically and release tumor antigens in situ to enhance cancer immunotherapy. So here is another uh, picture of how we can use MONs for cancer immunotherapy. You see organosilica, uh, organosilica framework and silica framework, and both are in total used for cancer immunotherapy. And first here is this cancer, uh, cancer cell. And inside this cancer cell, these MONs are injected. They are injected and uh, you see this T cell activation uh, takes place and T cell pro proliferation, and they actually get uh, attacks the synergy anti-tumor effects. So this creates this anti-tumor effect inside of the cell. Okay, and it has been applied on rats so far, lab rats. Uh, uh, in number seven, we can use nanomaterials, uh, especially metallofullerene nanomaterials for cancer immunotherapy. So uh, metallofullerenes, they are allotropes. Allotropes means large volume of nano uh, materials. So fullerenes have been studied intensively since their discovery, and they are derived from the unique structure of the outer fullerene cages and engaged metal clusters. So uh, metallofullerenes, they possess excellent stability, paramagnetism, large surface area, and unique surface that is easy to be functionalized. So from their functionalization, we can achieve uh, gallofullerene, uh, that is GDCA2OHX. Uh, it is a carbon 82 fullerene derivative with a, a gallolinium atom entrapped in the core of carbon cage and its surface is modified with X number of hydroxyl groups. So um, this fullerene was studied originally as a new generation of MRI contrast agent due to its high proton drill exhibity. Um, so it was actually first used as an MRI contrast agent. So as an MRI contrast agent, they may be used like this. This is a, a diagram, broad diagram about their uses, like um, uh, deselenide selene, PEG saline, photochemotherapy combined immunotherapy. After uh, these PEG saline, they get attached with um, MSN PEG, and then uh, they are injected inside of the cell. So this cell, they develop these anti-tumor uh, tumor resistance properties. So uh, mediate degradation and drug release, and then 
tumor cells, they get affected and then anti tumor cell are uh, produced. So these um, from tumor cells to anti tumor cells, they are produced. So this, these are affected tumor cells and these are actually uh, really uh, good cells which has anti tumor properties. Then here are some other uh, um, surveys that was uh, surveys and MRIs that was taken uh, for the cell therapies and how cell responds to um, this TM is. Then polymer lipid hybrid nanomaterials for cancer immunotherapy. So this is the eighth type of nanomaterial we can use for cancer immunotherapy. Uh, we I, I'll directly go to the figure. And uh, this figure actually uh, explains that uh, melanoma tumor microenvironment here, here, uh, this is melanoma tumor microenvironment and the tumor, this melanoma tumor grows rapidly inside of this, uh, this type of environment. So when this polyplex and a trimer liposome, they are combined and they produce LPR, these tumor cells, they get this anti-tumor uh, properties inside of them. And they start to produce this uh, very new and uh, good type of anti-tumor property uh, characteristics uh, tumor cells. Mm, here is another uh, visualization of how they uh, works. And then biomacromolecule based hybrid nanomaterials for cancer immunotherapy. So some are biomacromolecules based. The surface of organic or inorganic nanomaterials in, is inevitably covered with various biomolecules, forming a protein corona, which reduces the targeting ability of the nanomaterials to some extent. In comparison, biomacromolecules have good bio uh, compatibility with surrounding normal tissues, which can be advantageous for clin clinical application. So there may be some or other type of bio macromolecules. One may be membrane-based nanomaterials, uh, and they work like this. In membrane-based nanomaterials, they ac are actually induced in membranes. So um, uh, like RBC, PLT, okay. So they actually combined with RBC, PLT inside of, uh, uh, inside of the membranes. And these cancer cells and tumor cells they uh, sonicate and uh, they actually uh, build anti-cancer and anti-tumor uh, tumor resistant cells. So you see these tumor cells, they get serial extrusion and evaporation and tumor nanovesicles. So ROX remote loading and we get DOXLINV, which can be indu uh, which can be pushed, infused inside of the membranes to grow a membrane-based uh, tumor. Uh, nanomaterials. Now, protein-based nanomaterials, they have attracted considerable amount of for their biocompatible and non-toxic characteristics. So they are totally non-toxic. Uh, he here are some examples of protein-based nanomaterials are given. And also nucleic acid-based nanomaterials. Some application of DNA nanotechnology is rapidly expanding in the field of cancer immunotherapy. And uh, one of that, one of the most promising one is nucleic acid-based nanomaterials. Some of the examples are also given here. So the um, nucleic acid-based nanomaterials, they actually are used for cancer therapy like this in this figure it is um, explained. So uh, for in, uh, in a rat, it has been applied so far. A rat's lymph node, uh, they uh, actually contains immature DCN antigen. When it is pushed with antigen, it is uh, the cell matures. And then from there we get B cell and CLT mediated uh, cytolysis epitosis. So from there, we actually, from this lymph node, the anti uh, hepatocellular car uh, carcinoma cell we get. And uh, that cell is anti-tumor. Uh, and uh, resistance to uh, shows resistance towards cancer. So in conclusion and outlook, we can say that in recent years, hybrid nanomaterials have been developed and applied in various biomedical fields. Hybrid nanomaterials integrate the properties and functionalities of organic and inorganic materials or diverse biomacromolecules exhibiting good biocompatibility. 
biodegradability, uh, drug loading capacity, and intrinsic activities in response to internal or external stimuli. One typical example is hybrid organosilicon nanomaterials and all the other nanomaterials that we have so far talked about, such uh, MOFs and MPNs, they're combined with PTT, PDT, RT for inducing the ICD effect. So generally inorganic components, they play an important role in hybrid nanomaterials, but their biomedical applications are limited by poor biocompatibility and colloidal stability. So far, the drawbacks are that they are only used in labs and in rats uh, and those, but in human, they are not that much used. That is the drawback of this uh, review um, uh, of all this development in nanomaterials. So uh, that is all for today. Uh, for acknowledgement, uh, this review journal has acknowledged JL and WL contrib contribution and their project was supported by the National Natural Science Foundation of China, the National Key Technologies R&D Program of China and the Natural Science Foundation of Shanghai. So thank you everyone. If anyone has any question, you can ask now. Thank you so much, Jashimuddin Sohil, for your excellent presentation. Please, anyone has any queries? Anyone, please? Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, since we are using nanoparticles for cancer treatment, is are the chances that uh, these nanoparticles will accumulate in non-targeted organs? No, actually nanoparticles, they are uh, so tiny. Uh, the cancer cells, uh, their radius is almost 10 to the power minus eight nanometer. And these nanoparticles, their radius is around 10 to the power minus 11 nanometer, okay? So they have this uh, very tiny structure which can elongate, which can combine with the cancer cell very easily, okay? So uh, there is no chance absolutely that it may uh, combine with other cells as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your nice question. Marwa Khan, apni maybe kichu bol chen, but amra clearly shunte patsi na. Okay, next, uh, karo kone question? Uh, amar, extra question, uh, do these nanoparticles by chance have any cytotoxicity problems? Um, so far in lab, nanoparticles are used uh, in rats and uh, lab animals. So uh, there is slightly, for every type of medication, there are slightly, uh, we can think that there may be some uh, side uh, type of side effects. Okay, so it, it is possible. It's not that it's not possible, but the adverse effect of chemotherapy and um, chemodynamic therapy or photodynamic therapy or uh, this type of RT, CDT, RDT, okay. Uh, so using nanoparticles and combining them with these medications yeah. has far less adverse effect than those, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking question. I'm open to uh, uh, all sorts of questions. Uh, anybody can ask question, please. Okay. Our Karozudi Kuno question Nathaki, I'm like a session. I can complete good to party. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Yoshimudin Shuhel, and thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.